We write electronic software for basically it's used by electronic engineers to develop um, all sorts of electronic products. So for example NASA uses it to develop spacesuits, it's used to develop everything from well, nuclear guided weapons to um, um, MRI scanners for the for health industry. So all sorts of different electronic products, some small, some we believe very strongly in making no barriers to innovation. So when we wanted to introduce data management controls of the like that you have with PLM, we wanted to make sure we did not lose at all the uh, the ability to preserve that that highly um um, agile, in, um, innovative approach to our software so our engineers could continue to uh, innovate without worrying about the control. Sometimes you introduce control, you lose the ability to innovate. Too much control. So what we've done is we've written this new electronic data management system which integrates with PLM systems and provides that, that final piece in the puzzle for PLM because up until now they've always black boxed the electronics. Now for the first time they can have control over right down to the, late, the lowest levels using uh, an approach that separates the design vault from the release vault. So you've got these two different vault concepts. One for design, which, which is one part of the design process, which needs to be allowed to be flexible, and then the release, which needs to be very, very well controlled. And we've now, we think we've nailed that one. So firstly, because we are so heavily export-based, we have 97% export revenue, and our business is therefore very distributed. We have a lot of um, corporate requirements, like taxation in America is very complex, particularly sales tax. It's a nightmare. Um, we have to deal with uh, human resources issues in different countries, you know, annual leave management systems, all sorts of different things, you know, cross-border transfer of products and the like, so, and cultural issues as well. So all of these, these issues mean that we have to deal with complex systems, but we're a relatively small business, so the challenges of having highly complex systems, but yet in a, in a way that where we can afford to do it, is, uh, is a challenge. We also have a very um, agile approach to our business. We like to change things very readily, very quickly. We like to be able to turn on a dime, as it were, and, and go in different directions very quickly. So for us, and for me as a CIO, I need to be able to respond to the executive to making 180 degree turns very, very quickly and, and take them in the direction that we want to go. So the other aspect of this is that because our business is distributed, and we, we do manage it from Australia, we need to get access to real-time information rap rapidly as it's happening, and our CEO requires very, very instantaneous uh, information. So for me, that was a challenge, and we've built a data warehouse based around our Salesforce data, which is our business platform, that synchronizes in a fif every 15 minutes back into a SQL Server database. So we've got a full copy of all of our data live that we can build BI platforms on. Well, we had initially written our own ERP system because we couldn't find something off the shelf. My background as a chartered accountant led me to understand this part of the business very well. But, and we first started looking at Salesforce to solve our CRM needs because well, let's face it, I'm an accountant originally, so the idea of um, building pipeline management tools and sales process tools in the lines, you know, likes of miller Home and sales methodology and so forth were not my strength. So we looked at it from that point of view. We originally were looking at using something like Oracle, and what we found was that the, uh, the cost of implementation, forget the licensing of the software, just the turn the key on was very, very expensive. So it's only $600,000 about four years ago to turn on the key. So what we decided to do was we looked at uh, Salesforce and initially I thought, no, I don't like this because I was looking at what I couldn't do with it. But then when I went and had another look at it and thought, what can I do with this? And I realised I could do anything. And that's why you know, we were the first company in the world to see this as a potential business platform. Now, when we first looked at Salesforce, you could only have 25 custom objects. And I challenged Salesforce to say, look, this is not enough. They said, how many would you want? They said, they said, do you want 40? Do you want 50? And I said, well, here's 94. I listed 94 specific objects that I would want just off my head without thinking about it. Now we have over 300 custom objects in the system doing all sorts of different things. So the initial drivers were really the ability to cope with this um, very distributed business, which had highly complex things, being very agile so that we could handle things like you know, multilingual support, handle things like supporting us 24 hours a day. You know, one of the things I love about the Salesforce platform is that I got to get to sleep. Our business used to have a very heavy spike in June and December. Now, our auditors would not let us ship the product if we didn't, sorry, would not let us book the revenue for a product if we didn't ship the, the goods before um, financial year end. So when you're talking about a product that used to be 14,000 and we're now selling for five, um, 
if you didn't book that revenue, you know, it wasn't good for your bottom line. So uh, come June, where we would do sometimes six, seven, eight percent even of our annual revenue on the last day or two, um, that's a very nervous time for a CEO if you're not going to able to, if your systems fail and you can't ship the goods. That first year we had a record June and uh, I was able to sleep at night. And our staff can get support from Sydney, Ireland and uh, America, so follow the sun support with a dedicated Salesforce representative that can do things for us. I like that very much. Initially, as I said, my first thoughts were, what can I not do with this? And there were all sorts of things that readily jumped out at me that I couldn't do. Um, I was worried about, I mean, initially I was worried about the fact that, you know, it's, a, it's my data and all the rest of it, but I very quickly got over that because I saw very quickly that here was a model that could provide more security than I was capable of providing because my focus isn't on trying to provide security. My focus, I mean, obviously we want to make sure that our, our data is secure and we're very careful about our, um, our client's data and about our technology, but the best way to deliver that, that technology and that security is by using a, a model that is you know, designed to deliver that model.